Welcome to PreciousMetalsInvesting.com. My name is Ted Sudol, and I have the pleasure of having as my guest today, Charlie Nitos. Charlie is a senior market analyst with LaSalle Futures Group. Welcome, Charlie. Good afternoon, Ted. Kind of crazy day. Is out there these days. Uh, yeah, it's a crazy, uh, not only the market-wise, but also with the uh, COVID virus scare, panic in the streets, and uh, craziness in the streets. Tell us what's happening with the um, markets today. Well, what, what, about markets today here, we're feeling more pressure, it seems to me, like the coronavirus is obviously the dynamic that's moving markets here today, and I think it's really the ebb and flow of information that is moving the markets. By that, I mean when you hear positive news, or at least positive news down the road, you see the market respond to that. When you, you hear uncertainty or you uh, hear the, quote, facts that are, are kind of all over the place that people question. I think these are, are kind of the dynamics and the one-liners that are moving the markets oh, over the past couple of weeks. Right. And I think that uh, today uh, people don't know uh, which facts are true and which facts they should depend on and which facts are not true. Uh, I mean, I think that I, people's belief in Trump saying there's nothing here are kind of uh, fading away. Yes. Well, I, I, you know what, is, is I think, though, too, you know, in all fairness to that, I think they have uh, assembled over the past couple of days a pretty sharp team to work with this. And I so much wouldn't listen to what the individual politicians are saying. I would listen to more to uh, Mr. Fauci, Ms. Burks, and I feel bad that I don't remember her full name, but Seema who is from, I believe, health, I'm not sure if she's from Health and Human Services or exactly what of the alphabet agencies that are out right. there dealing with it, but they seem to, uh, again, be the experts, and they seem to be where I'm focusing my attention on, on listening to, to what they're putting out. I agree with you. I was impressed by uh, Dr. Fauci, and I think that he has a good bead on the situation. I think he does. I don't think that he's alarmist. I think he kind of has his, his, his arms kind of wrapped around this as much as you can with so many unknowns. And I'm going to use a quote from Mr. Donald Rumsfeld going back and reaching back into my book of quotes. And when there are known you know, unknowns, there's a lot of known unknowns in this situation right now, not to make the light of a very serious situation. Exactly. Uh, in 30 years of, 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 of being in the futures industry, um, I think that we are seeing unprecedented volatility. Um, some of the moves that we've seen in the Treasury bonds in the uh, equity markets, uh, again, is, 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 is kind of breathtaking. I think, though, that uh, in these situations, I've, I, I've been through many. I've been through Katrina. Um, I've been through the Gulf War, and I think when cooler heads prevail and you start to look for limited risk strategies, thinking uh, out of the box a little bit, there are many ways uh, that an investor can still participate in these markets and manage risk. Are you somewhat surprised uh, that the uh, precious metals are not uh, rising? They're actually falling currently. Um, because precious metals are often viewed as a safe haven during times of volatility. You know, Todd, I'm going to push back on that a little bit here, because if I take a look, and, and, and specifically I do do a lot of work on gold, and I'm going to take a look at the gold chart and the weekly gold chart, and if I go back and I look to the price action here, when really, I mean, let's start talking about when this uh, uh, conversation starts, started really happening here in the U.S., not to make light of, of any other country, but it, if I look on January 6th, we came into that week and gold opened up that week at 1572 basis the April contract. Today, right now, we are presently trading at uh, 1636. So I think there was a lot of move, and I think right now, well, there has been a very big move in gold over the course of the past two months here right now, or a month and a half, um, I think we did hit, and again, you can probably throw a lot of technicals out the window at this point, but we did hit the 1700 mark. I think right now, as you're seeing in the equity markets and a lot of other markets, I think that you're seeing forced liquidation and you're still seeing margin call selling. 
And what do you see for the near-term future? I know with the volatility today, uh, it's hard to um, project any uh, distance into the future. Uh, but one of the things that impressed me in our past conversation was mm -hmm. how much you could really derive from your analysis of the technicals. I'd like to get your take on it. Well, you know, I, I, I had talked to you about the weekly charts. Again, the weekly and the monthly charts are still in an uptrend. The daily charts are still in an uptrend, and I'm perceiving this to be a retracement of a much bigger move. Today, albeit the market down, and currently gold is trading down about $24. Uh, just underneath the market here is the 20-day moving average, which will be interesting. We haven't tested it since we broke away from it uh, last week. Again, we hit the 1700 mark. Again, I think you're seeing liquidation. I'd like to see what the market does here at the 1629 area, which we came, you know, uh, pardon the French, but we came within spitting distance today. Today's low is 1632.40. We were able to attract some buying there. Bigger picture, I think if we do take that 1629 on a closing basis level out, you would come down to the 1600 mark. I think there's pretty decent support down there. That would be a $100 break off of the highs. And one thing I do want to point out is that three sessions ago, gold did put in that high of just a shade above 1700. I'm sure you are fielding a lot of calls uh, from your clients. What are the most commonly asked questions uh, that are uh, asked of you? The most commonly asked question that I would see in investors is how can I protect myself from this? And we've done some work, again, on, um, in, in, in terms of the uh, – and, again, this is, this is kind of moving away from the precious metals area, but we have done some stuff in terms of looking at – limited risk put spreads um, on the indices. You know, okay. specifically, we've been working since it's the broadest, uh, you know, base or broadest measure of the market. We've been looking at the E-mini S&P options and finding um, good risk to reward scenarios where you can protect yourself to the downside in a limited risk fashion. For our listeners who may not be familiar with those, uh, could you explain a little bit about what put spreads are? Sure. Um, a put spread is, uh, again, if you're doing it, it, it would be a vertical spread. It would be where you are buying the nearby strike and selling a further out strike. In other words, uh, for S&P is right now, if you were to buy, S&P is presently trading at 27 45 If you bought a 2745 put, that would be at the money put. Let's say you turned around and financed that by selling a 2,700 put. Oh, thank you. And I mean, if, if if somebody wanted to to talk about in terms of strategy, I think it's it's in terms of explaining an option, explaining the risks of uh, or the risks in option and trading limited risk spreads. Boy, Ted, we could we we could do an hour or two on this. So I didn't want to really take up too much of your time going into a technical explanation um, of how options trade. I think that could be a whole other uh, very long conversation that we could have. Okay, I would like to do that. Yeah, uh, so if we can uh, schedule that for uh, maybe a week in the future, we'll um, yeah. do that more comprehensive yeah, that would explanation. Be fine. I mean, if you want wanted to do yeah if you if you wanted to do another segment um, again specifically on options and options trading on futures um, again that's that is the realm of um, what I do in, in, in terms of trading I probably 90 percent of the business that I do is option trading and 100 percent of it is in the futures industry okay Charlie uh, could you explain a little bit about yourself uh, your background and uh, what your what you see as your um, strongest areas sure I'm in um, I my, my title is I'm a senior market strategist with LaSalle futures group we are located Located at the uh, Chicago Board of Trade. Um, I've been in this business for, oh, going on almost 30 years, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> in, in terms of, uh, I started out my career, cut my teeth, if you will, um, on the floor at the Chicago Board of Trade. Um, I've uh, managed um, institutional trading desks, both off and on the trading floor. I've worked in a trading pit. So I think the value of that is to kind of know uh, order flow, um, know how orders are filled, actually understand how orders are filled. Um, one of the things that I 
do see in this business. Um, I've watched the evolu evolution of trade going from the uh, trading floor up into electronic trading and people obviously in their homes, in offices, trading off of the floor. One of the things that always surprises me is the lack of knowledge that a lot of people in this industry have on how a trade actually clears and also in terms of execution. If you were to ask me in terms of execution, I'll give you an idea. When you are doing multi-leg spreads um, on trading platforms, you're basically, uh, and I see this every day on a daily basis when I talk to clients, that you're doing a multi-leg spread on the screen. Uh, basically, what the screen is displaying is the bad end of the bid and offer. And by that, I mean on anything that you're buying, they're displaying the offer. Anything that you're selling, they're displaying the bid. Okay? There is always a middle in that. What we do is we will, we will search out. I have two different execution platforms that I have at my tips. I would say probably nine out of ten times I can call to somebody where I still can get a mark market maker that will make me a market, and I would say nine out of ten times they're generally giving me a tighter market. What that means to my clients is a better fill, and you know, every every nickel and dime that I can save for my clients in terms of uh, uh, execution is a great benefit to them. And could you explain a little bit about uh, LaSalle Futures Group and what they do? Sure. LaSalle Futures Group is a, um, a, a, a boutique brokerage firm. And by that, what I mean is we have a wide range of client needs um, and services that we do provide for them. We provide anything from hedging um, in, in the agricultural and energy markets to um, assisting individual investors in full-service trading, uh, as well as providing for, for more uh, hands-on approach type traders, um, having access to multiple platforms that we can put them on to give them just good, clean execution. And what would be the best way for um, our listeners here to get in touch with you or uh, LaSalle Futures Group? Would it be a telephone number or an email address? Sure. They could always, you know, during market hours, uh, um, feel free to reach me at 312-818-1895 by a phone or uh, email C as in the letter C, NEDOS, that's spelled N like Nancy, E, D like David, O, S, S as in silver, at LaSalleFuturesGroup.com. So to recap that, that's C, NEDOS, at LaSalleFuturesGroup.com. Well, Jolie, thank you Perfect. very much for being with us today at, I'm sorry, yes, you were going to say? That is LaSalle Futures, I, I, I think I aired on that, that's LaSalleFuturesGroup.com. Well, thank you for in, in, including me in your forum today, Ted, and uh, as you had mentioned earlier, I would, um, you know, uh, at, at your request, I would love to participate um, in doing a segment specifically on uh, educating investors on options on futures. Well, thank you for being with us today at the uh, Precious Metals uh, Update. Uh, it uh, will be found on PreciousMetalsInvesting.com, of course. Uh, for uh, our Android users, it will be on Google Play Store for our iTunes users, it will be on the Apple Store. And also, the Precious Metals Update is now an Alexa skill. To add it to your morning list, and it will play the Precious Metals Update. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Doug.